Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and today you're joining me on board good old narrowboat Abel's Ark for a discussion that may seem a little more negative and maybe even despondent compared to what you're used to on this jolly narrowboat life channel. So today I want to discuss my growing concerns about the future of boat life on the canals in the UK. And this is a topic that you can approach from so many different angles, it's unbelievable. And different things will obviously affect different people in different places more or less. So I'm gonna keep this simple, stick to three key areas and base this purely on my own experience of living on a boat up here on the very busy summer holiday destination Langothlin Canal. Now, those three key areas I mentioned are costs going up just like every other element of life, it seems at the moment, particularly the cost of buying a boat in the first place. Then also I'd like to talk about the sense of overcrowding and increasing traffic on what is obviously a very finite, narrow stretch of water cutting through the countryside. And finally, as a plane goes overhead, I want to discuss something that I can only really describe as uh, the breakdown in the fabric of society. <laughs> Perhaps I am getting old before my time. Good news my friends, I've decided to make this a voiceover video from this point on so you don't have to look at my head bobbing away in the corner. So I want to start by talking about the potential overcrowding issues that I think could be on the horizon. Now I feel that I've been well aware that this canal is really busy in the summer for most of my life. I've grown up not far from the canal and then I've obviously spent most of the last decade living on it. So when I bought a boat and wanted to live in this broad region, I knew what I was signing up for. Really busy summer times with lots of tourism and really quiet, almost desolate winter times. A nice broad spectrum of conditions and a nice pleasant cycle of life. Now that's something that I felt it's been getting busier and busier over the years and some of the more popular places to moor up like Ellesmere for example. And again this might be just pure circumstantial and me turning up at the wrong place at the wrong time but I felt that some of these places have been getting busier and busier with people mooring up for longer around these hot spots and of course all of the passing traffic and holiday makers which as I know many of you personally if some of you stop and speak to me after seeing these videos when you're up here I've got absolutely no issue whatsoever. I think that the thing that's really made me concerned about overcrowding, which on some areas of the canal there's people who will tell you very much so that it's already a problem, but I've got no direct experience to comment on those things. However, when the 2020 incident happened, which I'll have to call it for the sake of the YouTube algorithm, that obviously meant that all the holidays abroad were cancelled, so all of the UK's internal tourism hotspots suddenly became absolutely swarmed with unprecedented numbers of visitors. And so you saw problems with wild camping up in Scotland where people just weren't respecting the local area or the local people themselves. You saw people coming up to some of the Welsh mountains and mountains all over the country and just parking their cars in unbelievable numbers all over the place, blocking access and again, just showing a lack of respect or interest to the local place and people. And equally, we obviously saw some unbelievably busy holiday times on the canals and I moved back onto my second boat after briefly living on dry land during early 2020 in time to see the summer of 2020 and unbelievably busy times and I mean I cannot express to you that it was actually unbearable at some points and I would go off walking for hours I'd sometimes to get away from the busyness of the canal which seems an extraordinary statement to make about such beautiful rural places I would rather leave my car parked up somewhere along the canal and then walk to my hometown as it meant that I could be away from the canal and all the boats and all the traffic for longer. So um, yeah, it got a little bit out of hand and I know that there's some people who had some really rough, rough bad times with a lot of the exceptional amount of traffic up here. And again, 
it soon dies off and you soon have a really beautiful calm canal heading in towards winter. Now, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily a significant issue having these blips and moments. However, I think that what 2020 showed us is the potential for just how busy the canals can get. And if you then consider that there's always talk in one place or another of building new marinas, even on just the relative short stretch of canal up here, there's talk of more uh, a second marina going in at Ellesmere, which is already such a busy, popular place with both boats moored up at the canal side and also passing traffic. And then, oh, I mean, it, it's... It just doesn't bear thinking about if all of the marinas that got proposed were built, we would soon start to see the levels of 2020 traffic building up as being a standard part of the canal life. And that's something that I just do not want any part of. And again, it's not about trying to stop other people enjoying the canals. It's just about the fundamental nature of putting that many boats into a finite space of water creates a shift in the actual basic experience of being on that space of water. So that's one concern that I've got. And then tie into that the uh, degradation of the fabric of society element of this video, which will come in just a short while, and you'll start to see why I think it's more of a concern. So next up, I want to really briefly just talk about costs because this is an issue obviously affecting everybody at the moment as prices are rising in almost unbelievable uh, numbers in some cases and it's something that affects you whether you're on a boat, in a house or wherever else you may be living and it's something that I've always looked at boat life and felt how lucky I am to have such a low cost lifestyle and then the heating in the winter, it's such a small space so you don't need loads of coal and wood to heat up a boat and so on. And the thing I really want to talk about is the cost of boats themselves. But before that, I just want to say that today I've been into a supermarket and at the entrance I saw a bag of coal for sale for £8.50, which was the equivalent size of what not too long ago I was buying three bags for £10. And the idea that a supermarket can now take the size of a, a bag of coal that I was buying three for a tenner and feel that it's appropriate and possible and maybe even only profitable to charge £1.50 less for one single bag than I used to pay for three is, well, it's terrifying, let's be honest. That's a level of inflation and a level of increasing cost that's just extraordinary. And again, it's something I'd have to look in deeper to with the coming winter. I've only got two bags of coal left on the boat at the minute. But again, it doesn't fill me with joy, the idea that you've potentially I might be paying almost three times the price for a bag of coal. Um, so that's one thing that obviously is a universal impact on all our lives wherever we're living. However, um, again, maybe created by the uh, 2020 incident and its increased desire for uh, UK-based holidays, and maybe partly because of the increasing costs of living, people are looking to things like boat life as potential cheaper alternatives, which it isn't necessarily a cheaper alternative. It all depends on how you wish to live on a boat and making it a cheaper lifestyle yourself. But... I've been absolutely aghast as I've been looking to buy a new boat and sell my current boat to see just how much some boats are being put up for sale for. And this is not in any way trying to attack the individual or anything like that, because if that's what the market says it's worth, then go for it and get your money and enjoy. Um, but just as one example, and I'm not calling anybody out specifically or criticising for this, but I've seen for sale a 30-foot boat that is older than my current 45-foot boat and it was for sale for thousands of pounds more than I paid for my current newer 45-foot long boat. And that's the sort of stuff that makes me feel like I may end up never actually getting my next boat and just sticking with Abel's Ark because firstly, I love it, and uh, secondly, I just feel like I can barely stomach some of the prices I'm seeing for the 
uh, age of some of the boats and what they're like and the work that might need doing on them. Um, but anyway, that's just something I wanted to point out as once upon a time I looked at boat life longingly thinking, oh, look at that, I could actually afford to just buy my boat outright and stuff if I was uh, sensible. Whereas now I feel if I was trying to get into boat life from scratch at this point, I would probably end up giving up before I got as far as buying a boat because of the costs that I'm seeing. So yeah, that's a that's another jolly uh, cheerful bit for this video. On to the final section, the degradation of the fibres of society. So there's two elements to this. Firstly, just because I don't want to go on and on in a negative way, this isn't my sort of video to do really. Um, now again, this may be circumstantial or it may be completely accurate, but I feel as if in recent times the amount of vandalism, the amount of boats being broken into, whether for burglary reasons, or whether for stealing or whether for just trashing and vandalism's sake, I feel as if there's a lot more of that than I've ever previously seen over the last couple of years. And equally, just general sort of silliness and nonsense going on, whether that's trouble on the towpaths, whether that's people vandalising locks and canal equipment. And I've actually been the victim of a bizarre bit of vandalism myself uh, since 2020, when my boat was out in a pretty rural part of the network and almost inexplicably somebody probably in a group showing off to their friends or whatever goes on in these people's minds i came back to my boat to find the material the soft cover at the front and back the cratch covers on the bow and stern of my boat each of them just had one single stab wound in it and i mean i can't explain it's it's just bizarre but somebody has come along with either a, a thick knife or a very sharp object and just jabbed it into the front and back covers of my boat. Totally senseless. And, I mean, luckily, they didn't drag that blade around and really shred them up. They've just done two puncture wounds. And I, it, I, I honestly, I can't quite get my head around what the sense in that was, or why you would do such a weird thing, because it's something that I wouldn't like to even say if I might have been getting on and off the boat for... A week or two before I actually noticed it because it's just such a clean line stabbed in and out of the boat or in and out of the cover but yeah and again that's the sort of thing that I've always gone about my life and people have always said don't you worry about the boat and things like that and I never did worry about the boat but I've got to be honest there are these these little things of uh, I don't know it's been creeping in a little bit more that I've got a little bit more of that dread feeling in the back of my mind now I've got no worries that the boat's going to float off or disappear or anything like that because of the nature of uh, some of the precautions I've taken I can now track my boat and there's other secret uh, security measures that I've been dabbling with however there is that that core idea that you know what I'm looking on Facebook and I'm looking online and I'm seeing more proper crime going on it's not just like stupidity or petty vandalism or spray painting on the locks or things like that it's like real nasty sort of horrible crime it's the only way i can describe it like and it's something again that i think isn't necessarily a specific boat life issue because looking at what's going on in places like my hometown and seeing the comments coming up on the local facebook groups there and there's not only trouble and theft and burglary and stuff going on, but there's like bizarre, intimidating behaviour going on that's almost inexplicable of its own accord. Um, and then the second half of the end of the society and civilization as we know it, talking about how busy the canal got over recent years, as with the idiots destroying the local landscape and littering Scotland and so on. You've also got some people on some of the boats that I saw in the busy times. And again, part of the reason why I just felt I need to just get away from here and have a break on dry land somewhere. Um, I cannot express how some people on boats just could not care less. And it's not even something I'm trying to pin on just being a holiday boater issue. It's a private boater issue as well. And I mean, 
I can't imagine flooring it past moored up boats at full speed. And I've... I mean, my boat since 2020 has got more scratches on it from being banged into. And again, people will be like, oh, sorry, sorry. And people will be apologetic in general. And it's all part of life. Again, I don't expect everybody to be flawless all the time. But I've equally been a witness to boats being crashed into by people who thought that it was all a big joke. And just, I mean, I again, I can't imagine going past people's boats, whether they live on those boats or they're just their their boats that they have for fun. But I can't imagine being so disrespectful that I would crash into it and have anything other than an apologetic, immediate response. And I've literally seen and heard of people laughing as they go past, scraping alongside somebody's home. And again, I would very much be interested to see their reaction if somebody drove a car into the side of their house or so on and then said, oh, oh sorry about that. Oh it's, oh, it's crazy, isn't it? And again, just the utter sort of thoughtlessness and maybe it's like the sort of modern consequence-free TikTok generation sort of mindset of nothing really matters. Uh, let's just get here and move along and then forget about it because we've got a ascension span of 10 seconds and so anything that we've done yesterday is all the past and that's another person's problem if they choose to dwell on it. Again, I'm turning really bitter in this video. Help me. <laughs> oh, good grief. <laughs> oh dear. Dan Brown finally snaps. <laughs> Anyway, my friends, oh, goodness me, I don't know if this is going to make it. You know what? I'm just going to end it here. I'm just going to end this video here. <laughs> this has descended into chaos. I do apologise. Right then, let's restore some order and say thank you so much for tuning in. I know it's been a bit of a weird video. It's not like me to do these big moany posts, but I just thought it's just some things that have been concerning me, and it's a growing concern as well at that. So until the next time, my friends, please do check out my other videos. Please do check the links in the description to find my books about boat life, both Kindle and paperback. And also find me posting boaty clips and photos all over the internet. Until the next time, my friends, keep it complaining worthy, keep it interesting, keep it boat worthy. Have a fantastic day and farewell.